In this session, I'll be telling you about different types of protista members. So, if you can talk about your syllabus, you will have to talk about five types of protista members. And all these five types of protista members are classified into three categories based upon the mode of nutrition they follow. Now, the very time I was talking about Monera, I have told you that Monera member is maximum nutritionally diverse kingdom. Now, if you can talk about among eukaryotes, so among eukaryotes, animals, they have got the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Kingdom plant, they, they all are autotrophic. And when you talk about kingdom fungus, they all are heterotrophic again. And when you look forward for the protista members, so they have what you call autotrophic mode of nutrition as well as heterotrophic mode of nutrition. So, when autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition is present, and in autotrophic, only photosynthetic mode of nutrition is present. Always remember, in Kingdom Monera, there was another mode of nutrition which is called chemosynthetic or chemoautotrophic mode of nutrition, which is absent here. So, among five kingdoms, the maximum nutritional diversity is found in Kingdom Monera members. But when you talk about all the members of eukaryotes, the maximum nutritional, nutritional diversity is found in the members of protista. Now, let's discuss. So, protista members can be autotrophic. They can be autotrophic. They can make their food in presence of sunlight. And when they make their food in presence of sunlight, they have chlorophyll. Apart from chlorophyll, some other pigments may be present, but they have the pigments to trap light and convert into the chemical energy so that they can synthesize their food. When you talk about saprophytes, they basically grow on that decaying matter. And when you talk about parasitic, they have their living host to infect on and then to suck up the nutrients from there. Now, when you talk about autotrophic mode of nutrition, so they all are called plant protists because they behave like plants. So this group of autotrophic protista member, it's called plant protista members. This particular group, saprophytes, this particular group, it's actually belonging to like fungus-like organisms, fungus-like protista members. So this particular group is called fungal protist. And this particular group, it's called animal protist. If you can talk about, they all behave like animals. So this is called animal protist. So protista members can behave like plant, they can behave like fungus, they can behave like animal. And that's what I've told you, the boundaries of this particular kingdom are not well defined. They are the connecting link between kingdom Monera being unicellular and other three kingdoms being eukaryotes. When you talk about autotrophic mode of nutrition, we'll have to talk about three types of protista. It could be pyrophyta, chrysophyta and euglenophyta. Now there are three members, three actually uh, different type of uh, what you call protista members, which we'll be talking about and they have holophytic or photosynthetic mode of nutrition. Pyrophyta, the name phyta comes because they are something like plant, they are something like alga and pyro means fire. So they are also called fire algae. The members of this particular group are called pyrophyta or fire algae and what the member will be talking about in pyrophyta will be dinoflagellates. So you have dinoflagellates in your syllabus, dinoflagellates belong to pyrophyta. When you talk about chrysophyta, they have important food reserve material called chrysolaminarin and chrysolaminarin gives them the name called chrysophyta. So chrysophyta basically have two members, one are diatoms and the second one is decimates. You have diatoms in your syllabus. When you talk about euglenophyta, euglenophyta is a group of euglenoids and euglena and all you must have heard about. So euglena will be coming here. When you talk about saprophytic protista members, we'll be basically talking about slime molds. Slime molds, they behave like fungus. There can be a cellular slime mold, there can be cellular slime mold. And finally, in parasitic, we will be talking about protozoa like, you must have heard about plasmodium, you must have heard about amoeba, paramecium. So all these protozoans will be coming right there when we will be talking about parasitic protista members. So next session, we'll be starting with the details of pyrophyta, that is dinoflagellates.